welcome to another Fireside Chat. Glad to have you joining us today again. And uh, let me just go through a few quick announcements real fast, and then I have a, a little bit of word I want to share, um, not from Billy Graham's devotional book today, but something God's really kind of laid on my heart for us personally today. Um, but first of all, I want to remind everybody, this Friday night, tomorrow night, hey, we have the film, really docudrama, that we're going to be showing called Before the Wrath. And can I encourage you, I, I hate to say you want to be here, like as if I'm telling you what you should want, but friends, can I just tell you, it is going to be well worth your time. Um, incredibly well done. It talks about Christ's return, about something we call the rapture. And uh, is it really in scripture? Is it really something that's going to happen? Anyway, come find out. Seven o'clock, we will start. We're gonna have popcorn here for everybody. Of course, everything's free. Um, and invite a friend, invite a family member. Um, it, it, it will definitely be well worth your time. Also, Sunday then, uh, we're continuing on with the series, uh, Who We Are Becoming. In this day we live in, and as God just wants to work in all of our lives in any way, to transform us, make us more like Jesus, what does that look like? And this Sunday we're going to be talking about being people of breakthrough. People of breakthrough. Do you need a breakthrough in your life? Do you know somebody else who needs a breakthrough? Many times there is a price to pay, but God wants us to see breakthrough in our lives. And so we're going to be going over that this Sunday. I um, hope you can join us. If you can't be here in person, please pick it up on the website later in the day on Sunday. <clears throat> also, remember Tuesday are our elections, so please be in prayer for those. Just be praying that God steps in and intervenes. My prayer right now especially is that God not allow the wicked to succeed in their plans. And God, would you just break the power, the authority of the wicked in our country and release this country from the tyranny of their rule. That's what we need. And then that God would pour out of His, His Spirit and anoint godly men and women to lead in this country. So anyway, hey, be praying with me about that. Hey, if you want to take a day or two to fast and pray during this time, please do so. I know I'm doing a little bit of that myself right now. So anyway, hey, the <clears throat> passage that I really have on my heart today is found in Isaiah 40. I think many of us know this passage. Um, I, I think it really applies to us because this was a time in Israel's history, really Judah's history, where godly people were becoming very tired of the wickedness that was in their land, hearing all the prophetic words of judgment, knowing that time was limited for their nation, and all these different things, not knowing exactly what the future was going to look like. Fighting the battle, but seeming like they could never get any headway. People were weary, spiritually. <clears throat> and so God speaks to the prophet Isaiah, <clears throat> and after, after he, Isaiah reminds everybody that, hey, the nations, these great nations, the Assyrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, the Egyptian Empire, all these superpowers that surround you are trying to destroy it, they're nothing to me. They're less than a drop in the bucket, okay? God is so much greater. Then the prophet goes on with these words. Now listen to this. To whom can you compare God? What image can you find to resemble him? Can he be compared to an idol formed in a mold, overlaid with gold and decorated with silver chains? Or if people are too poor for that, they might at least choose wood that won't decay and a skilled craftsman to carve an image that won't fall down. Well, haven't you heard? Don't you understand? Are you deaf to the words of God? The words He gave before the world began. Are you so ignorant? See, God sits above the circle of the earth. The people below seem like grasshoppers to Him. He spreads out the heavens like a curtain and makes His tent from them. He judges the great people of the world and brings them all to nothing. They hardly get started, barely taking root, when he blows on them, and they wither, the wind carries them off like chaff. 
To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? asks the Holy One. Look up to the heavens. Who created all the stars? He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. O Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? O Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And friends, I just feel that is a word from God, is a word of encouragement for us today. What does Paul say? When I am weak, then he is strong. See, when we're able to finally get out of the way, operating in our strengths, I think that's kind of the catchword in today's modern church. Find your giftings and your strengths and, and then you can minister from your sweet spot. God ministers in the greatest way from our weakness, our weak spots, because then He receives the glory. And so friends, if you're feeling weak today, if you're feeling tired, it could be that you are in the prime place, exactly where God wants you to be, so that He can bring powerful, mighty, breakthrough in your life and through you in the lives of others. <clears throat> Just earlier today about lunchtime, I, I had the incredible privilege and honor of sitting down with a lady who is a true saint of God, a true warrior. Um, her name is Georgia Penniman, lives in Ronan, Montana. Joan Melrose hooked me up with her. She's worked with YWAM all of her life and has served in multiple countries, has taught many of their workshops on prayer and intercession and spiritual warfare, all these sorts of things, and just had a wonderful, wonderful conversation with her. And it was interesting, some of the things she said, but one of them that she pointed out to me, and I, I, I'm hoping I'm getting the story right, so Georgia, if you are listening to this, forgive me if I get it a little wrong, but we went through so many things. One day she was praying and just asking God, Lord, it just seems like we're at a different level. It just seems like wickedness is just so rampant anymore. And she, I, I forget if God spoke to her directly or if she had this distinct impression. But it was revealed to her that in these days that we live in before Christ returns, Satan is up, upping the ante. He is working extra hard to bring his man on the scene, the man of lawlessness. Just as we are expecting the return of Jesus Christ, our King and Savior, Satan is standing in opposition to that to bring his man to power. And so what Satan has done now, he has unleashed his demons, his, his, not just his demons, his legions of demons in the spiritual realm to attack nations and churches and people groups and everything. So we're, we're, we're talking about legions now. Just like when Jesus cast the legion out of the demoniac of Gadarene. Uh, check that, that out in the Gospels. But friends, also, it was interesting, she pointed out, because she said this with absolutely no fear. And I didn't sense any fear either. We don't have to fear. Just recognize the intensity of the battle has become much greater. And it's not going to let up because this is the day that we live in. So we need to make sure we're clothed with the armor of God. Make sure we are part of a family. Part of the family of God. We have to be plugged in, friends. We cannot be on the margins. We cannot be fringe people. We cannot plug in sporadically once a month when we feel like it. If we're not busy with something else, we have absolutely got to make it a priority to be plugged in to a church family and remain consistent in that and, and show up 
Otherwise, we're not going to make it in the day that we live in. That is some of our, some of our strength right there. But also this. This was really interesting. And also, let me turn over to Ephesians real quick. Ephesians chapter 6, when Paul's talking about the armor of God, there's a, an incredible phrase there, and, and Georgia pointed this out. This is what victory looks like, okay? Victory in the spiritual realm. In addition, after listing all the weapons of our war, warfare, Paul says this, in addition to all these, uh, oh, hold up the, the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil, put on salvation as your helmet, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, and on every occasion, stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Right before that, he says this, Therefore, put on every piece of, of God's armor, so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground. Friend, it's not so much all the time that we advance and see powerful, phenomenal, supernatural things. The victory is in standing our ground. When the battle's over, only one entity is going to be left standing. The other is defeated. If we are the ones left standing, we are the ones holding our ground, we have won the battle. And friends, right now it seems like there is an onslaught going on in our nation and around the world, okay? It seems like this spirit of lawlessness, of chaos, of carnage has just been released on America. And I would say it's not just America, but around the world. Friends, that's the spirit of lawlessness preceding the man of lawlessness, wanting to make his appearance, bring the man of Satan on the scene, okay? We stand opposed to that. And we need to continue to stand opposed. Stand our ground. And in that, there is victory. And in that will come revival. So friends, can I encourage you in that? After reading that and having just read this passage from Isaiah, friends, our God is so much bigger. We have no clue, no ability in our limited human minds to comprehend the grandness the scale, the incredible power of our God, where He just speaks the word and whole galaxies come into existence. Friend, if He can do that, guess what? He can take care of your life, your needs, your situation, as well as all of our needs, the needs of our country. But friends, we need to stand our ground and that in prayer. So would you join me in that? Let's be people prayer, people of fasting, people of God's word, people of worship, people fasting. Let's be people of breakthrough. Would you pray with me? <clears throat> Father, I just thank you for your presence in our lives, God, and your awesome power. That when we are weak, then you are strong. And Father, more than ever before, we desperately need you to show yourself to us and to our nation, to the people of this land. God, we need a breakthrough. Father, in your church, among the lost, in government, in, in the media, in entertainment world, the business world, everywhere, in our families, our workplaces, our schools, God, we just need a breakthrough. And, and so, Father, we ask for that. We ask for a fresh outpouring of your Spirit that calls people back to you. God, forgive us for our sins in this nation. Forgive us for our sins as your people, for being complacent, of being so caught up in our own agendas and the things of this world. God, forgive us for that. But God, would you wake us up and empower us again like never before. Father, would you pour out your Spirit. Father, would you push back the powers of darkness. God, would you equip us and anoint us so that we can stand our ground in this day of battle and not become weary and give up in the fight. But God, would you be our strength. And God, I pray that you would pour out fresh joy, give us new peace, that we can rest in you, and so that we can know your joy, and your joy can be our strength. And then when the battle is done, we can, we can be the ones left standing and see our enemy defeated. But God, we need you. So Father, we cry out to you. God, when you come into our own situations, 
Would you come into, into the, the needs that our nation has, that our valley has here, Father God? We are in such need of you in so many ways. And so, God, we call out to you for your intervention, for your power and for your help. God, for the anointing, the empowering, the outpouring of your Spirit. And, Father, we ask this all for your glory. God, that your name might be honored in this world and everything. Your kingdom come and your will be done here on earth as you want it to be in heaven and here on earth. And Father, we pray this in the holy and powerful name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, friends, I hope this has encouraged you and challenged you. Just remember, stand your ground. God bless you guys.